Hey there, welcome back to my channel. I'm Katie, and today we are back in the kitchen because I have something super important on my mind, eggnog. When I was a child, I tried eggnog for the first time and I thought it was disgusting, like super gross. I did not understand how anyone could drink eggnog, how anyone could enjoy it. And as I've gotten older, people have asked me, do you like eggnog? And I've said to them, you disgust me. And so recently, I bought some eggnog because my husband asked me every year, do I like eggnog? And every year I can't remember if he likes it or not. And apparently neither can he. So I bought the good eggnog. I bought some Southern Comfort eggnog and I was like, we're gonna give this a whirl. And by we, I meant him. But I got to thinking like, maybe I just haven't had a good eggnog yet. Since I've had such this strong feeling about eggnog, I wasn't really inspired to try a bunch of different varieties or make it myself or, you know, really get into the root of if I liked it or not. It was just one of those things I just don't like. I'm wanting Eric to try it so we can settle once and for all, do you like eggnog? And I decided I'm gonna give it one more try. So I did. The look of it does not give me like good vibes, but we're gonna try it. Okay, that's really good. It tastes like Christmas. And guess what? I like eggnog. So I mean, it's really like Christmas, right? That's what it tastes like. I probably won't mourn eggnog when it's not on the shelves after Christmas, but it does kind of seem like the perfect holiday drink. But it did get me thinking that I bet I could use eggnog in some baked goods throughout the holiday season and they would be a big hit. So that's what led me here to the kitchen today and I'm excited to take you on this quick, easy journey of making eggnog custard. And I even have on my holiday apron because we're celebrating here. Okay, first things first, preheat your oven to 325 degrees. You're gonna need a roasting pan or a deep casserole dish like this one and some individual ramekins to bake your custard. Today, I am making custard for two. If you're baking for your family, all you need to do is double this recipe. The same principles apply. Oh, wait, I almost forgot. While you're getting these things together, put a pot of water on to boil. You're going to end up filling your pan with enough boiling water to go halfway up the ramekins. And this is gonna make sure that the custard gets evenly cooked throughout. You're gonna start with two large eggs. Our chickens are currently not laying very many eggs a day, uh, which means that we are kind of using them sparingly. So while we usually have eggs for breakfast, we've been foregoing that some days of the week. Whisk them until they are completely combined. A fourth cup of whole milk, a fourth cup of eggnog of your choice. I'm using Southern Comfort eggnog. A third cup of sugar, half a teaspoon of vanilla, and a small sprinkle of nutmeg. So now you have your bowl of whisked ingredients. Now you're gonna transfer that mixture to your two ramekins. Once you've evenly distributed that mixture between the two ramekins, place the ramekins in your dish. Now listen to the next two steps before you put them in the oven. Once the ramekins are in the dish, take the dish with the ramekins over close to your oven. You're gonna add that boiling water to the dish while it's close or even while you have it in the oven so you don't have to worry about sloshing water all over the kitchen. Place it in a 325 degree oven for at least 45 minutes but 45 to 50 minutes. 
You can tell it's done by a few ways. It should be golden brown around the edges. If you're not sure, you can stick a knife about a quarter inch away from the edge down and pull it out and it should pull out clean if it's done. Remove the roasting pan or dish from the oven and take the ramekins out carefully. You wanna go ahead and get them out of that hot water because if you don't, they will continue to cook. Okay, these little babies are done. I left them in about five minutes too long because I went out to feed the animals and I totally forgot about them. So they were in there for a total of 50 minutes, but they definitely could have been pulled at 45 minutes. They're a little bit darker in the center that I'd like to see. Let's give it a taste. Still has a little jiggle, so I'm pretty happy. I got that little bit of nutmeg on top. Man, I'm just kicking myself for leaving it in there that extra five minutes because this would have been perfect. It definitely has the eggnog flavor without being overpowering. I just can't get over that I insisted that I didn't like eggnog because it really is Christmas flavored. I think adding a little bit of rum to this mixture before baking it would have been. Thanks for joining me today as my life was completely changed and rocked by eggnog. If you think you don't like eggnog, I encourage you to give another chance and maybe even bake with it. Thanks for watching today. I'll talk to you soon.